Hey, how you doing, guys? We have just completed our trip to Pakistan, a remote country we knew little about. As we enjoy traveling to exotic places that differ greatly from our home country, Malaysia, we decided to join a tour group organized by Go Holiday 360s in Rembrandt without hesitation. We are not sure what to expect in Pakistan. Some of our expectations were met, while others completely differ from what we initially imagined. And that's why we want to show you what we have seen, what we have visited, and the experiences we have encountered along the way. We arrived at Kuala Lumpur International Airport in the afternoon. Since we have some time before our flight, we decided to grab a bite at the Plaza Premium Lounge. Our flight was a charter flight by Pakistan Airlines and would take about 6 hours and 10 minutes to reach Islamabad, which was about 3 hours behind Malaysia time. After a long journey, we finally landed in Islamabad and were warmly welcomed by our guide Ali and our driver Yasin. We would be travelling with them for the entire trip to explore northern Pakistan. We arrived at Pearl Continental Hotel in the middle of the night and underwent strict security checks including an x-ray screen of our luggage. Our tour leader KG helped us complete the check-in process which requires both the passport and visa. During our trip to Pakistan, we asked our guide to advise us where to buy the local SIM card and he suggests that it would be best to use internet roaming instead of purchasing a local SIM card because different regions in Pakistan require different SIM cards. He also helped us to exchange Pakistan currency and during our visit, the exchange rate was about 13,000 Pakistan rupees to 50 USD. After a tiring day, we were eager to receive the key to our room and rest. That's end on day one of our tour. Good night and see you tomorrow. Good morning. Today is the second day of our trip to Pakistan. We started with a buffet breakfast at the hotel before heading to our first destination, the Dharma Rajika Stupa. Along the way, we saw many fascinating sights, but the most notable was the decorated trucks, including one transporting live animals. These trucks were not only colorful but adorned with handcraft patterns. The first destination of our visit is Dharma Rajika Stupa. Dharma Rajika is the earliest and the largest Buddhist religion site in Taxila. It was built to enshrine the redistributed holy relics of Buddha by the famous Maureen king Asoka the Great, who was known as Dharma Raja for his service to Buddhism and hence the name Dharma Rajika. The circular stupa is constructed in solid stone masonry and has a diameter of 131 feet with 45 feet high drum. An ambulatory passage paved with stone slabs runs around the stupa, providing a path for the devotees to circumambulate the holy site. We visited several sites around the stupa, including the meditation cells, the main stupa, Buddha's feet, the monastery area, and the votive stupa. Oh, this is the main chamber for the stupa. And those are there were votive stupa here. Here. The 
So this is not the real one. This is a replica. Oh, this is a real one. This is a real one. The hands come and cut away the head. Ah, right. The Dhamma Rajika Stupas Chetu is mostly beheaded due to the natural decay, vandalism, and invasions. This is the monastery area. The body tree, Pu Ti Shu. I'm around here, I'm coming. You have the money? Healing is all for the people fishing. Yes. This is the main street. The next destination is the Cap City. It was a hot and sunny day, so it is important to protect ourselves by wearing long sleeve shirts or sunscreen. When we were there, a knowledgeable local guide showed us around and pointed out various highlights of the ancient city. According to him, the remains of the sites belong to four different groups of people, pre-Greeks, Greeks, Scythians, and Parthians. The city was established around the 2nd century BC. The town was well planned and fortified. The main street was studded with shops and places of worship like the Abdidao Temple, Sun Temple, Double-headed eagle stupa and king's palace. So sunrise from east, sunset is the west. So at that time when it moves, so it makes circle like this. Cairo, your shadow was here. So now it's ah. to this most towards north, right? Then it was moving. So sunset this way. You are. Three, three nation signs here. First one is the Greek. This is Greek architect, and the second is Indo-Greek, Greek and Buddhist mixed period. So double-headed eagle was a national symbol of the Greek period, and the third one is the Sanchi style. In Sanchi, so many stupas the door same like this. We do have uh, Pashtun set. I have friends here. I have got some friends from Pashtun set. Next, we head to Taksim. And uh, the, the first main part of the dwellings of Dharmuda is due to the it has been recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site by its significant and impressive collection of Gandharan art dating from the 1st to the 7th centuries. 
Gandharan art is a distinct style of Buddhist sculpture that emerged in the Gandharan region, which is now located in northern Pakistan. Unlike earlier Buddhist art, Gandharan artists depict the Buddha in a relatively naturalistic and realistic manner, which makes these statues special. The unique blend of Eastern and Western artistic tradition in Gandharan art resulted in a unique style of Buddhist sculpture that distinguishes it from earlier Buddhist art. The collection comprises approximately 7,000 artifacts including stones and stucco sculptures, votive objects, coins, pottery, and other artifacts, with a total of 30,000 items remained in the reserve collection. The museum boasts a collection of priceless artifacts, including relics of Lord Buddha. After visiting the museum, we stroll along the beautiful garden surrounding the museum before returning to our coach. Our final destination in this region of Taxila is Julian. Julian is a ruined Buddhist monastery that dated back to the 2nd century and was inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1980s. Teaching, uh, teaching Buddhism. Yep, sir. This uh, was the university main center for Buddhism. Hmm. So students are sitting here yeah, to listen to the teacher. teacher. Hmm. During the invasion of the White Hunt, Julian was devastated and later abandoned. The complex of Julian comprises of the main stupa, 27 subsidiary stupas located around the main stupa and two adjacent courts. The lower stupa court is a spacious open area, and there are stupas that is previously exposed in this open area but are now roofed over for protection. Although the stupas have lost their domes and cylindrical drums, their square bases are still decorated elaborately with stuccos arranged in horizontal tiers. The healing Buddha is a seated figure with a circular hole at the navel. According to popular belief, merely touching his image or calling out his name can effectively cure some illnesses. Fasting Buddha Steward room. And that is reflectory. During our journey, we stopped at Kanpu Dam to capture some beautiful photos. After we have visited all the places in Taxila, our driver Yasir drove along the Hazara Highway until we arrived at Bisham Hilton Hotel where we spent the night.
This is a lovely three-star boutique hotel with a beautiful garden that looks even more stunning when illuminating at night. We enjoyed a buffet dinner here and had a restful night's sleep after a long day traveling. That is the end of our day one itinerary. Good night, and I'll see you tomorrow morning.